First at four, guilty on all charges. A former police officer is convicted in the death of Dante Wright. But her attorneys try to keep her free on bail. We have the judge's decision. And here's Paul. Well, I'll tell you what, Karen, the snow as expected moving through the thumb right now. But what comes next, you'll need an umbrella for, not a shovel. We'll talk about that Christmas forecast straight ahead. A car wash in Detroit is grabbing attention in a unique way. I'll show you how the owner is keeping the city of Detroit motivated. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start with breaking news coming from the trial of this former Minnesota police officer. We're talking about Kim Potter. She has been found guilty on all charges. The jury deliberated for four days before returning convictions on both first and second degree manslaughter. There was no question Ponner shot Dante Wright, but she says she meant to grab her taser and accidentally shot the 20 year old to death after the verdicts were read. Her attorneys tried to keep her out of jail until sentencing. The judge told the defense she disagreed. I am going to require that she be taken into custody and held without bail. And I recognize uh, your arguments, Mr. Ng and Mr. Uh, Gray, but I cannot treat this case any differently than any other case. So Potter was then taken into custody. Her sentencing is set for February 18th. We're gathering the first reaction to the verdict, and our coverage will continue when you join us at 5. Here at home, we are heading into that long Christmas weekend, and you know what that means. Many of you or your loved ones are part of that holiday travel rush. We are at Metro Airport this afternoon, but first, we're also keeping a close eye on the weather, including snow in our north zone. Meteorologist Paul Gross standing by with the first forecast. Hey there, Paul. Yeah, hey, good afternoon, Karen. And this thing pretty much played out as expected. Maybe just a tad less snow. Now, granted, we weren't expecting much, but less than even that down to the south here. But to the north here in the thumb, here's where that band is going through. Let's zoom in for you. And you can see this is uh, going through the Port Huron area all the way up through Sanilac County. So Port Sanilac all the way down to Lake Port Croswell here. Now, this dark blue is a moderate to heavy band of snow. It's just brief, but it caught your attention. I mean, we've had reports of moderate to heavy snow as that blue band came through. But again, aside from that, things are settling down. We are in the low to mid 30s right now. If you're just sitting out the door, the wind is not too bad. That means the wind chill isn't so bad either. And temperatures this evening not really falling that much, just kind of holding in the mid 30s. So coming back in just a few minutes, we'll talk about that Christmas forecast, Karen. We'll see you back here in a few. Sounds good. Thank you, Paul. It was a big day for travelers as millions across the country hit the road or maybe took a flight for the holidays. Our crew saw this crowd at Metro Airport this afternoon. According to TSA, more than 2 million travelers passed through TSA checkpoints all across the country yesterday. That's roughly 1 million more travelers than last year. More people are willing to travel after spending most of last year in quarantine. On um, this one in particular, I think more of us are able to be actually be with our families, whereas per se last year, we were like a lot of us were in lockdown and afraid to travel, uh, more so isolated. Uh -huh. So it's good to be able to get out and see those loved ones once again. We will hear more from travelers about their experiences during another unusual holiday tonight at five. Now let's talk about the very latest developments surrounding the coronavirus. There is a new drug, new Omicron research, and also another local university just decided to start the new semester remotely. Jason Colthorpe in the newsroom tracking all of it for us. So let's start local. Jason, which school is making the change? Uh, yeah, Karen. O well, Oakland University in Rochester was the first to shift to remote learning for the beginning of the semester in January. It's a two week pause to act as kind of a precautionary quarantine coming out of the holidays. Now it's Wayne State University, which is doing pretty much the same thing. The university just posted the update on its website. It cites the anticipated increase in COVID-19 cases and positivity rates, so it wants to limit the number of people on campus through the month of January. For now, most students will switch to online classes. Students in clinical classes or labs will get specific instructions from their deans. For the second day in a row and other news, U.S. health regulators have authorized a pill to treat COVID-19. Today, the FDA gave the green light for the use of an antiviral pill from Merck. That pill is only authorized for adults with a positive COVID test with early symptoms who face a high risk of hospitalization. The FDA notes it's not as effective as Pfizer's pill, which it just authorized yesterday. The label will also warn of serious safety issues, including the potential for birth defects.
Both treatments will be free to patients in the U.S. after being bought by the federal government. One of the biggest questions about the Omicron variant has been how dangerous is it compared to the other strains? You've heard Dr. McGeorge touch on this a little bit. New preliminary data suggests people are between 50 and 70 percent less likely to be hospitalized than those who are infected with Delta. The findings from Britain add to the evidence Omicron produces a milder illness, but it does spread faster and it better evades the vaccines. That means hospitalizations could still jump because the number of infected people could increase so quickly. Also, these first results are considered highly uncertain, so take it with a grain of salt because they are based on a small number of patients. But Karen, we're all learning about each new variant in real time here. Uh, whenever a new strain emerges, the research has to start all over again. So what we all we can do is tell you what we know at the time. New at five, we're uh, going to be talking uh, about the search for COVID tests here in Metro Detroit, as many of you are ready to gather for Christmas. I'll see you tonight at five for that. Karen. All right. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate it. Ethan Crumbly's parents are fighting to get their bond lowered, arguing they didn't know their son might commit violence. Their 15 year old son is charged with four counts of first degree murder in the Oxford High School shooting. James and Jennifer Crumbly have asked the court to lower their bond from $500,000 to $100,000. Prosecutors say they gave him a gun and failed to remove him from school when teachers raised questions about disturbing drawings. They have been behind bars since December 4th. Both are charged with involuntary manslaughter. Now, prosecutors won't have a chance to respond to that bond request. Well, there won't be a verdict in the Ghislaine Maxwell trial until after Christmas. Jurors in that New York case have paused their deliberations until Monday morning. Maxwell is facing several charges, including sex trafficking. She's accused of helping the late Jeffrey Epstein to abuse underage girls. The jury has spent about 16 hours deliberating. The judge asked the jurors to take COVID precautions while during the holidays. If convicted on all counts, Maxwell faces up to 70 years in prison. Former President Trump is turning to the United States Supreme Court to keep certain documents away from Congress. The House Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection has requested presidential diaries, also visitor logs and other notes concerning the events leading up to that riot. Lower courts have sided with Congress. Trump's attorneys argue former presidents have a clear right to protect confidential records from being released too soon. Following this, of course, we'll keep you posted. Okay, if you're having a bad day, where do you look for a little inspiration? Maybe your family, your friends, or your faith? Well, you might not think about heading to a car wash, but one local businessman has found a way to connect with customers. Local force Kim DiGiulio shows us his messages of hope are having a bigger impact than he ever imagined. Driving down Woodward in Detroit, you can't miss Celebrity Car Wash, located just north of Grand Boulevard. People come to get a good car wash, but it's likely they come back for that human connection. I think that what sets us apart is our connection to our customers. Julian Hill has been connecting with his customers for nearly 20 years now, and it all started with this sign. You see every typical business and it has something like $5 off, $10 off, or ladies day or get your car waxed or something like that. Putting ads or deals on his sign didn't seem to resonate with his customers. If you're not connected to something, then you're connected to nothing. Julian wanted to do more with the sign. We uh, started putting messages up for the community to help inspire people. The sign making appearances on Facebook and Instagram pages on a regular basis. Just because people will pull over to the side of the street, take pictures and post it because they wanted to connect. Julian never expected to inspire people when he opened up this car wash, but he says it doesn't matter what your profession is. People can inspire others anywhere. Like I said, it's ironic for a car wash to be doing it in the middle of, you know, the north end. And it's just reassuring to, to having good vibes and good peace in your life. He comes up with a lot of the quotes and sayings with his son, but sometimes they're just things that he needs to see. That way, every day while he's here at work, he can look up and be inspired. In Detroit, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4.